All right, let's talk about back pain in kids. Mm. So this is kind of, I, I realize that I really know like nothing about back pain in kids. Every time I review all this stuff for these kinds of courses and things, I always learn something. And this is like, oh my gosh, I really don't know a lot about back pain in kids. So I can't tell you I've ever diagnosed tethered cord. I'm not sure I would even recognize tethered cord. This tends to be younger kids. Okay, this tends to be presenting in infants and younger kids, um, sometimes teens. And this is pain on flexion, on spinal flexion. Basically, I bend forward and I get pain. And this is from basically fixation of the cord um, with kind of adjacent scars. It kind of tucks it down the dura there's like these fibrous things that kind of hold the cord tuck on the cord it's considered developmental or sort of congenital and it can present as late as young adults but but i think it's something that's not very common in general and neurosurgery is the one that would follow up on this thing i don't honestly think it crosses our path very often but it's something worth knowing exists out there especially in a kid that has some back discomfort that's worse on spinal flexion that's something to kind of factor in there um, we do know that scoliosis which is pretty common actually at least mild degree of scoliosis this is usually something you can see. This is where you take, have the kid take their shirt off and just take a look at them from behind. And you can see the curvature in their spine. And if it's little, a little bit of curvature, it's no big deal. But the worse it gets, the more problematic it becomes. And especially if it's high in the thoracic spine, it, it ends up causing, it can cause restrictive lung disease. So it can cause some trouble. It can be absolutely anywhere. And if it's terrible, it's, it's surgically fixable. They can actually go in and put in rods and kind of straighten people out a little bit. But, but look for this, because this can be something that causes kids to have some back pain, as can Schurman's kyphosis. So this is kids that have this weird anterior wedge-shaped deformity of their vertebrae. And so they end up with this really curved looking spot. They look like a sort of the dowager's hump that you see in an older woman who has this over time. They are built like that. These kids end up with these sort of vertebrae that are just kind of built like that. Um, they can cause them pain. It can also cause restrictive lung disease because it kind of caves in their a functioning um, bellows of their, of their thorax. So so this can cause trouble with them as well. This is something usually you can just see on exam and maybe x-rays will show you this. And this gets referred uh, and it gets that, that's all outpatient decisions as far as whether they do anything aggressive to help take care of these kids often do, by the way. Syringomyelia. This is basically an accumulation of fluid. This is cerebrospinal fluid somewhere centrally in this in the CNS, and it can be anything from a Chiari malformation that's kind of sitting up there at the top. That we see, we see these quite a bit. These Chiari malformations in all ages of people. Tethered cord can cause this thing kind of at the other at the other end. You can end up with syringomyelia in the cord itself. And usually there's neurologic symptoms that go with this. If you see this, radicular pain can be there. Back pain can be there. This is imaging diagnosis. This MR is the way CT for the head, but MR does it mainly for the spine. And this is something that's either supportive if it's not causing huge troubles, or it may be neurosurgically intervened. And then sort of the last thing to mention in pediatric back pain or anything that can cause back pain in an adult can cause back pain in a kid. So the tumors can do this. The osteoid osteomas can do it. Malignancies can do this. A kid can get AS a little early, that ankylosing spondylitis. It may be a teen that gets it instead of somebody in their 20s and 30s. Kids that have bad psoriasis, fortunately not common, but they can. They can get this. IBD associated osteomyelitis can get this. Kids that have dwelling catheters, again, they're at risk just like an adult. Um, with discitis and osteomyelitis go together and epidural abscess. So remember kids kids can get this too. So all the things that we talk about in the adult list, kids can get, and you just have to do your clinical sort of history and exam to figure out whether you're worried about them or not.